Hi, I'm Andrew Wasson. Thanks for tuning in to my weekly guitar blog. It's December the 9th, 2012, and this week we're going to run through proper posture for playing guitar. Now, this question was sent in by Zavin. He's out in Singapore, and his email to me reads, Is there any advice or tips you can give about posture? I've realized that many guitarists, myself included, have adopted bad posture. For example, slanted shoulders, not sitting straight, usually slanting toward the fretboard, etc. If you have any advice about this it would help greatly thank you from Zavin in Singapore well uh, thanks for writing in Zavin you know proper posture is not just something that will help you play and practice longer and help with overall better success with your playing techniques but proper sitting and hand positions will help you maintain the long-term health benefits of your lower back as well it's unfortunate uh, that it's quite common for guitar players to have lower back problems when they reach their late 30s and early 40s by this age, most guitar players have been sitting with a guitar in front of them for literally thousands of hours. So let's begin by having a good look at how hand and body posture can be improved and with these improvements, help you to play guitar longer with overall better body position and long-term lower back health benefits. Okay, so how we're going to do this is we're going to use some uh, photographs that uh, my uh, wife took of me playing guitar. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, the various important elements of each of the uh, photographs. Uh, and uh, I'll basically discuss you know, the finer points that are important about each one. Now, uh, starting here with the first photograph of me sitting in what is most commonly referred to as the classical guitar sitting position. And uh, what's happening here is uh, you can see I have my uh, left leg elevated so you can't really actually see it in the photo here but uh, down at the bottom there's a footstool that my foot is on to elevate it up uh, about uh, four to five inches or so off the floor uh, the other leg you can see is uh, off to the side and uh, the knee is uh, bent and the guitar's body is sitting in the center of uh, my body and uh, you can see the sound hole uh, area is pretty much right over the center of my body. That's something to keep in mind. It's very important. Uh, shoulders are fairly straight. Of course, uh, you know, you uh, want to pay attention to that as much as possible because uh, if you start slouching, um, of course, what that's doing is it's creating a, a, a Sl uh, bent area of your back, your spine is bending and um, that's actually not good. Uh, you can tilt the guitar, you can see in the image here how the guitar neck is tilted a little bit more so that I can, you know, have a better line of sight with my eyeballs to the uh, guitar fretboard. Uh, let's talk a little bit about um, the right uh, hand, the uh, strumming hand. You can see here on this right hand layout um, that uh, the crease of my arm is uh, more or less at that uh, portion of the guitar here uh, where the curve of the guitar body comes around so uh, that's really important uh, because it will get your arm to come or into the playing area region in a uh, much better sense uh, sometimes I've seen it where uh, students will have a, a, a very um, s erratic bend to their uh, plucking hand uh, whether they're using finger style or they're using a pick you do not want that you want this nice straight uh, look that I have on my hand right there. So uh, well, let's move over to the fretboard hand next. Uh, you can see here that there is uh, the curve of the elbow with the hand coming up and uh, basically there is a pocket. I like always to talk about that. There's a air pocket you might say you know underneath here of my hand uh, where I'm getting um, the knuckles to arch up and over and what that does is it allows for better clearance of the strings. Now down in this photograph, um, down in this end of the neck you can see that my thumb is up higher and it tends to do that when you're closer to the nut of the guitar but as your hand would move uh, this way, you know, across the neck and you know, more towards the body of the instrument, uh, generally what happens is the thumb will creep down lower to more of the center of the back of the neck. So just to review, keep your shoulders really straight, your back straight, uh, important thing to think about is uh, in, in your lower back here there should be a curve uh, so that you have um, very good posture. Uh, you can see the bent knee that's happening there and of course the elevated leg with the other leg off to the side. Those are the important elements of the um, classical guitar sitting position. Now let's move over to another popular sitting position. In our next photograph, what uh, we have here is I'm sitting in probably the second most popular sitting position that you could have, which is essentially the elevated right leg 
So again, you can't unfortunately see it, but I have my foot uh, down here on a footstool, so it's elevating the foot up off the floor uh, by about uh, four or five inches or so. Um, and you can see what happens is the leg is elevated, so that brings the knee upwards a little bit, and it allows the guitar to sit uh, fairly comfortably on um, your thigh. So what winds up happening is uh, there's a little bit of a difference now for where the center of the guitar's body, uh, the center of the guitar is to your body. You can see it's kind of more off to the side. It's not like the classical guitar sitting position where the guitar was more in the center of your body. Also, you can see what's happened to the shoulders. They're not as uh, straight as they were. You know, the shoulders are a little bit slumped down a little bit here. So that's not fantastic for your posture. Uh, also, um, there is a little bit of a curve to the back on your body which uh, again is not great for your spine. So uh, that's stuff to keep in mind. Now the right arm, the uh, strumming or plucking hand, um, it's not in too bad of a position, which you know, one of the, this is one of the reasons why this sitting position is uh, so favored uh, amongst uh, people. Uh, you can see that the crease of the, uh, the elbow, again, is kind of right ag around again where the the body is, I believe that's called the lower bout of the guitar, so you know, the lower part of the body of the guitar is. So, you know, it's a pretty decent uh, position where it's sitting there, and, uh, you know, the hand position is too bad. It's uh, it's in a decent playing area. Uh, could be closer in, in the way I'm sitting here. I could have my hand a little closer to the sound hole, but that's uh, neither here nor there. Um, <coughs> but uh, overall, it's not that bad of a sitting position. Uh, the problem with it, uh, in overall, is the uh, the way the back is uh, is curved. You know, you you don't have a very straight back, and you can see there's this sort of slump of the shoulders, especially the shoulder for the playing hand. Um, and it's a little bit more of a, a tighter curve to the elbow joint on that. Um, uh, left hand as well, and you're you're getting. I mean, the the hand itself over here is not that bad, you know. In this in this region, where the hand uh, would have the uh, slight curve, so that the knuckles would arch up and have your clearance, and you can. We were talking before about the, uh, the pocket uh, underneath, so that you have that good arch of the fingers, and the clearance is there for other strings when you're, especially when you're playing chords. So the left hand isn't too bad. It could be better, you know. Uh, the thing that you know sort of screams out here is that really dropped shoulder. Um, but, uh, y you know, there's a lot of points to this sitting position to where you can see why it's, uh, it's favored. Uh, my biggest complaint would have to be the location of the guitar, how now it's gone so hard to this, uh, to this left area here. Um, <coughs> the posture of how you're sitting with that guitar could be much better if, uh, if the guitar was uh, more in the center of your body. So that would be my, uh, my main complaint. Um, it also makes it a little bit more difficult for when you come up the neck and you play higher on the guitar neck because uh, then this uh, elbow here on the playing hand winds up, you know, butting up against your rib cage and it's kind of, you know, sort of hits a, a roadblock there for you for technique. So there's pluses and minuses to this position, uh, mostly minuses in my opinion. But let's move over to another sitting position. Now just very quickly I wanted to uh, talk about um, another sitting position. And this might be popular if you're out at the, the cabin or sitting on the uh, porch, you know, sitting around the campfire. It's basically uh, just where you're, you're cross leg position. You know, you've, it, there's n my foot is not elevated on any type of footstool, but by crossing the leg over, you know, you do elevate this uh, um, left, uh, pardon me, right leg up a little bit and the guitar comes up at a, at a better position to be played. Um, now it's again uh, not that bad of a sitting position. You see the shoulders are uh, sort of the same way as the uh, elevated right leg uh, position that we had just gone through. Again the guitar is uh, slightly more off to the side than it should be you know that we saw with that uh, better classical guitar sitting position. Um, and of course uh, the back isn't at a fantastic angle you know so uh, another thing too is your your uh, uh, fretboard hand elbow is quite close once again to your rib cage in here so yeah, it's got some uh, drawbacks uh, but uh, you know it would do in a pinch if you were just sitting around the campfire uh, the thing that you uh, would probably often find uh, however seeing this uh, position is uh, probably you'd wind up having your uh, foot fall asleep on you so that's not a, a very good benefit at all uh, but uh, it's for short term playing it uh, isn't too bad uh, whatsoever so I just wanted to talk about this sitting position quickly and uh, now let's move on 
Next up, I wanted to talk a little bit about the fretboard hand, and uh, especially at the angle that uh, I wanted to bring to your attention. Uh, I'm back sitting here again. This is the classical guitar sitting position, and you can see there's this bend to my wrist that's very important because that's going to allow space under the fingers so that the knuckles are arched. You can see the first and second knuckles of e every finger, they're arched up so that the tip of the finger is being used that posture to play uh, directly onto the uh, string, onto the face of the fretboard. This is very important because that's not only going to give you the best sound, but it'll allow your hand to be as flexible as, uh, as it could possibly be, which will aid you in the future for being able to play uh, very uh, fast lines and uh, also be able to jump from one chord type to another chord type in a very nimble way. So uh, that's very important, uh, having that, uh, that, that bend of the wrist like so, and then the knuckles being arched on every finger so that the tip of the finger is uh, playing onto the string. Let's quickly take a quick uh, view here at the back of the neck as well. In this photograph you can see the back of the neck much better and also you can see how my thumb is sitting. That's basically the pad of the thumb is in the middle of the back of the neck and also in this photograph you can much uh, clearly, more clearly see the uh, uh, the space that I was talking about, that sort of air pocket, you know, that we were discussing earlier uh, underneath uh, between the uh, bottom of the guitar fretboard and uh, where you would actually have your, your hand. So um, also uh, you can clearly see the bent knuckle as well where you have uh, not just the bent knuckle but the you know the promotion of that uh, down lower as well at the wrist so uh, it starts from the wrist and then comes up into the knuckles and then that way you get that perfect uh, tip of the finger use on top of the uh, fretboard so uh, anyway that's a, a great shot to be able to see what's happening in the back of the neck let's uh, move on to um, the uh, strumming hand though in this image, uh, you can see here I went to work and got a hold of a guitar pick. I had anticipated that uh, probably a majority of people who would be viewing this video would be playing with a flat pick. So I want to talk a little bit about that uh, as uh, well as the fact that when you're going into playing guitar finger style, uh, you know, with uh, finger picking, it's much more involved and detailed. And um, I decided in this uh, video f I would be focusing just on the flat pick. Uh, but uh, the th main thing about using a uh, flat pick or plectrum is that you want to have the one side of the edge of the pick striking the guitar string in a perpendicular manner to the guitar strings. So when that pick comes down and attacks the string, you just want to have one side or one edge of the pick doing so. Now for the technique of the hand to do that, you want to have the pad of the thumb on the top part of the pick and then you also want to have the uh, tip of the index finger holding the other side of the guitar pick. So the main idea is that you're only holding the pick with just two fingers, the th the, well the thumb and the, uh, well, actually one finger I guess, the thumb and the index finger. Um, because in that way you can have much much better control over the grip of the guitar pick. You know when you're um, gaining your skills and you decide to begin gradually moving up to thicker, heavier gauges of guitar picks, uh, the flexibility of going from, let's say, rhythm guitar into, let's say, a single note melody line picked will come from the grip that you have between the thumb and the index finger. You will adjust that grip as you would transition from, say, rhythm guitar ideas into single note line ideas. So the grip that you have between the thumb and the index finger and also how perfect you can get the uh, small part of the uh, one side of the edge of that guitar pick striking to whichever guitar string you would like is um, really the the key is the trick to actually having very concise, uh, even perfect picking. Um, that and small pick motions uh, combined together to basically develop very good pick control and ability. Now, something else to think about as you're developing your skills is that the wrist is the key component to your picking. 
You know, how and where you hold that wrist will make all the difference. Um, you don't want to be rotating the forearm or moving the elbow back there. You basically want to have that fairly still. It will move a little bit because it will have to compensate you know, for maybe about a, uh, an inch or so as you are going to different guitar strings, maybe a little more than that, perhaps an inch and a half to, to two inches on a classical. Anyway, it's got a little bit of wider fretboard span. But that movement will come from the elbow and the wrist will really be the proponent of the picking. So the, the real picking posture and technique will come from this part of the hand here. And the more accurate that you'll become and the more flexible and, and uh, uh, your, more your ability will skyrocket will basically depend on how you're able to control those uh, uh, pick position uh, element as well as the movement of the wrist. So it's very important that you get a good handle on that and that's why uh, exercises like chromatic exercises and two string picking studies and um, different kinds of combinations of uh, chromatic uh, line ideas are very important uh, because it will slowly but surely get the picking hand uh, to be where it needs to be so that um, in the long run, you can gradually develop with a metronome and more and more speed and work your way up to 16th note triplets and eventually 32nd notes. So uh, anyway, there you go. That's uh, the right hand breakdown or the picking hand breakdown. And that pretty much concludes the uh, concepts that I wanted to cover for posture. So when it comes to good posture for practicing the guitar, there's only one way to go, and that's with good sitting hand and body positions. Now, if you ended up spending years sitting in ways that would result in poor alignment of the body, the hands, the wrists, and the arm, it will hold you back in your playing. Plus, add to that the results of poor posture and the long-term effects in regard to you possibly having lower back issues later in life, and it can be a long road to correcting the results of these uh, bad Bad habits. So place a lot of consideration upon how you're sitting and the alignment of your hands, wrists, and the arms. So the long-term benefits of paying respect to having good posture will be well worth the effort. Anyway, once again, that's about all the time I have for today. As always, thanks for watching. Have yourself a great week, and I'll catch up with you next time. Bye for now.